Okay, so I want to show you the power of a callable workflow. We've covered in our post sort of what they are, and I just want to show you a little bit of how they work, and I'm going to do it in the context of uh, some of the things we've been talking about with the lead management framework and the processing pipeline, just so you can sort of think about it or couch it in those terms. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a workflow here which has a webhook trigger, which means we can listen for any event from any system really. And we're gonna simulate a form submission from our website. So over on the right, I have uh, an object with properties that you might find in any lead form that you could have on a website, like a form ID, an anonymous ID from Segment, a GA ID, a Munchkin ID from Marketo, refer data, their intercom ID, what kind of offer they converted on, Salesforce campaign ID that that offer is associated to, email, company, first name, last name, all that good stuff. Um, and so I'm going to simulate this by posting to the public workflow URL, which for a webhook workflow you can find in the workflow settings menu right here. So you just copy this and then you can post to this workflow from whatever uh, place you'd like to. So uh, in any case, we'll just start by simply sending uh, a payload to the workflow. So I'm going to go to the debug panel so that we can actually see this sort of unfold in real time. So I'll send it over and we'll see a log pop up here on the left and we should be able to see the exact same thing uh, here, right? So same data right here. And now let's say that I want to make sure before I create this lead, I don't want to create a duplicate. And so there's a common pattern we use when dealing with a lot of stuff here, which is uh, we need to first look and see, does this record exist in our CRM? And so this is where uh, our search lead by email uh, comes in. And so it's a workflow we use and we need to change the operation to fire and wait for a response because we want the workflow to reply back and tell us whether the lead exists. And um, so I'm just going to look through all of our callables here and I have this utility search Salesforce for lead or contact 2.0. So we've done a couple versions on this. Um, the second version really what we did was we used to only be able to do it by email, but now we can actually pass it an object uh, lead or contact ID and it'll look, look it up that way as well. Um, so some cool stuff with this. Um, we have a couple Boolean options here. Uh, we can choose to get the Slack ID of the owner of the lead um, or the outreach ID of the owner of the lead, which we can then use for uh, messaging the owner or sequencing in outreach on behalf of the owner. These are just sort of like extended options that we can add uh, for that. So let's actually name it. Always a good idea to name your steps. So we're gonna say search by email. And we'll see, let's say search SFTC by email. Um, and then the thing that we want to do is we want to grab this email from the trigger output, right? And so, so uh, in order to do that, um, we can just change this to JSON path, which is how you would get a variable from uh, a previous step. And then we can just type in trigger uh, dot email, I believe. Oh, it's in the body object, I believe, dot email. And we can see here it tells us uh, where that is. So I choose this. And now let's go back to the debug log and let's send that post through again. Okay, send it on in. Okay, and so the workflow is fired. It's running right now, which is why this is yellow. And so once it's done, that'll turn to green. So it's, it's green, we have a response back. And so we have all this helpful information about this lead now, right? So we can see, oh, there's an owner of this person. It's me because the lead is me and we're just doing this for testing. Um, you can see 
my my name as the owner, which can be used maybe in that Slack message if, if you wanna return my Slack ID. And then we have all this data about me as a lead, right? So I can see all my lead score data, what country I'm in, all my phone number data, all this kind of stuff, scroll quickly. Um, so what, what company I'm a part of, what campaign memberships I've been a part of recently, all this kind of stuff. I can see that I can click and get to the exact log where we looked up all that information. Um, so it's super helpful in preventing uh, duplicates or just having helpful additional meta information about me. So now let's say that I'm just gonna add a few characters in my email address so that I know a lead doesn't exist and I'll run it again. And so here we go. We're waiting on the run to happen. And once this thing is done, what we'll see is that I, there's nothing there, right? So then if I want, I can, I can use, excuse me, the output of this for extra logic, right? So if I come here and I'll take the response where I actually have somebody, let's say, and I'm gonna grab a Boolean. And I wanna say, hey, if this person doesn't exist, then let's, let's, um, let's create them in Salesforce, right? So we can just say, do they exist? Um, and in this case, I wanna do a property exists Boolean. And so what I can say essentially is, um, I'll pick the ID. So this is like the Salesforce ID of the leader contact. Um, so I'll say if the property exists, then true, right? So, so if the person has an ID in Salesforce, then they do exist. Otherwise, if they don't, right, do something else, right? So if they don't, create the lead. If they do, let the owner know that they existed or, or that they uh, filled out a form, something to this effect. 